Are you a student, mentor, or parent that loves robotics? Then you're in the right place. Up to date info on all things robotics. This is the RoboZone Podcast with your host, Pete Ekman. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by Kettering University. It's a Kettering built world. Hello and welcome to the 61st episode of the RoboZone Podcast. This podcast is for Tuesday, May 22nd. In this episode, we expand on our discussion from a previous episode with seniors giving their advice to freshmen that are incoming for the FRCC. We get to know a little bit about each of these students from teams around the country. We get to look to hear what their experience was in first and how they would suggest a freshman coming into FRC would approach their first year. We get to hear how their teams did this past season in Power Up. And finally, we get to hear what they're going to do with their lives now that their first experience is over as a student. I hope you enjoyed this roundtable discussion. I enjoyed it very much. So let's get to this discussion. The RoboZone podcast is brought to you by AndyMark.com, your robot parts experts. Danny, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Daniel Birkin. I am from Team FridgeBot. We are located in Corona, Michigan, and I am the lead programmer and team leader on my team. Next up, we have Matt. Please introduce yourself, sir. Hey, all. I'm Matt Esser. I'm from Team 740, the Trojanators. Um, I've been involved for four years, and uh, I mostly uh, do a lot of CAD and uh, team leadership stuff and outreach. Nice. Next up, we have Ethan. Hi, I'm Ethan Senior. I'm from Team 2614 Mountaineer Area Robotics from Morgantown, West Virginia. I am the technical director for our team and also lead driver. And fourth off and finally bringing up there, we have Mr. Sharma. Please introduce yourself. Hello. Um, I'm Dixon Sharma from Team 226, the Hammerheads from Troy, Michigan. I was the team president this past year, so I kind of worked on all different aspects of our team. But before that, I primarily focused on CAD strategy and kind of the engineering side of the team. And Dixon probably has the largest team that I know of. How many people are on your team? So we had 183 registered members this past year, uh, and it's looking like we might even have uh, more members this upcoming year based off of our freshman orientations you guys, you guys really need to That's get a, a second team man. i'm that... serious or fourth yeah. or fourth <laughs> <laughs> i know i know i'm gonna catch heck from your your lead mentor but i've interviewed him in the past he knows where i live and we can discuss that at a later time so daniel tell us a little bit about team fridge but i know we've had know your we've mentor, had your on, mentor here on here many times many so times. tell us a little tell bit little about little team fridge but well uh our team unlike mr sharma is a little less than eight members on our team which makes it really small but it also we do rely on people and they do their job well which makes it uh come our robot come together a little bit better in my mind and in other people they compliment us a lot but uh we do have a lot of problems like any team we focus on our school a lot a bit we are centered in the the pool building of our school system and uh at least we have our own lab that's awesome it's not like it's a teacher's room but we do share it so uh it's only a little complicated like twice a year which is only in build season at the very like end of it ish going into competition season so it's not like in the bulk of build season Right, and you guys have, you, I've been there many times, you guys have helped out my rookie team a lot this year, and we greatly yeah. appreciate that. Tell us how Team FridgeBot did this past season with Power Up, Danny. Uh, well, uh, we did fairly well at Kettering Week 2. We were a fourth-seeded alliance captain and chose our team. A little bit ridiculed for uh, our uh, scouting, but we uh, settled that a little bit. And then we went all the way to the north of LSSU and became a second-seated alliance captain and brought home a blue banner, uh, which that just in that itself uh, moved us to states as a 53rd-ranked team over a lot of, one of the major teams in Michigan, which made us feel pretty good about ourselves. But uh, 
States didn't go overly well. We end, uh, A lot of bad things happen. Uh, or what I've been saying is anything bad did go happen, and, and everything that shouldn't have gone wrong did go wrong. But we were not last. We were 39th out of 40 in our field. So, yes, that was our season. And we can hear your, your mentor in the background. You can tell him to thank you for that later on, and I'm leaving that in this podcast. So, Matt, tell us a little bit about your team, what they did this season. So um, our team is comprised of about 30 members, um, and it's uh, a lot of inexperienced uh, students. We have only two juniors that have just joined the team uh, this previous year. Um, and we have seven graduating seniors this year, and the rest are sophomores and freshmen. Um, so we've really tried to uh, develop our team into a fully um, um, encompassing program and trying to d um, develop our team into a full program that embraces what FIRST is all about, um, which includes other aspects other than the technical aspects. So overall, we had a really great season. Um, we came together and built one of our better bots, um, even though... <laughs> um, this year's bot was pretty jank as it was. Um, I could actually put a picture in here a little bit later on for you guys to see. Um, but um, performance-wise, we got picked every single competition we've gone to except for the world competition. Um, I like to call us the ninth pick wonder because we have gotten selected by the eighth seed um, twice this year. Um, so I guess that's good. Um, but um, overall, we, did, we performed really well in all of our competitions, and we won the Engineering Inspiration Award at the Miami Valley Regional um, and gone to Worlds for our first time um, in program history. Um, and we're excited to uh, try to get back there next year. Matt, I, if you won the Engineering Inspiration Award, I don't think you would call your, your robot jank. Uh, that's the first time that word's been used on this podcast, so at least we're expanding our vocabulary. Um, but obviously you guys had a pretty good robot if you won that big of an award, right? Um, so the Engineering Inspiration Award is actually all about um, community outreach and um, just developing your community's understanding and appreciation for engineering. Um, I guess engineering has a little bit to do with it, engineering the actual bot. Um, but I think uh, one of the best parts about our bot is that it might be um, super cheap. It might be um, not. It might not look as uh, fantastic as all the other ones, um, but it performed really well. Um, this year. And I highly recommend um, you guys check out our stats this year um, in some of our match videos just to see how like a unique concept can go a long way. And we will do that. And that's why the Blue Alliance is a beautiful thing so we can go out and see some video of you guys. So Ethan, tell us a little bit about your team and how you guys did this season. Um, this year we were about 32 members, which is a little bit small for us. Um, we're a community-based team, so we're not based out of school. We're based out of multiple high schools plus homeschoolers. Um, this has been our best robot season yet. We won our first event, Palmetto Regional. Um, we were on the fifth seeded alliance, won that event, went into our second event in week four, won that event as the first seed at Smoky Mountains Regional, um, didn't win the third regional event, moved on to World, and then we're ranked fourth at the end of qualification rounds and took it to three in the finals against OP Robotics. And it, what world championships did you go to, Houston, or did you go to Detroit? We went to Detroit. Mr. Deshant, how did your team do? I know your team very well. I've I've interviewed your head mentor, John, on the podcast, but how did you guys do this season? Yeah, so this season was a, a very, I guess there was a lot of really high highs and uh, a lot of, I, I guess, just unexpected things happened. Um, we actually had the most successful event in our team history at uh, Gaylord Week 3, where we were... Um, we went all the way to finals, uh, and then we also won the Chairman's Award. So we had the Kling Kling going on, and then uh, we went to the Troy District, and then after that, the Forest Hills District. Uh, we were quarterfinalists at both events uh, as first picks. Um, so that was – Forest Hills is actually our fourth district event because we went to Indiana St. Joseph Week 2. So we actually ended up doing four district events, which is more events than a lot of teams uh, do in their entire season. Like the Cheesy Poofs went to three events, for example, right? Uh, so we just – we did four district events kind of to help prepare for states. And going to states, uh, similar to um, – Daniel earlier, I think we were 50th. They said they were like 53rd. So we were pretty confident on our chances to make it into the world championship. But uh, unfortunately, we ranked, I think, 22nd in our, our in our division. Um, we still were expecting to get picked because we were a like a kind of a switch uh, vault robot. Uh, and our stats suggested that we should have probably gone picked as well. 
uh, but unfortunately we didn't, and uh, we ended up missing the world cutoff by two district points, uh, which is really disheartening because there was a lot of moments in our season that I guess had gone the other way, could have easily taken us to worlds. Like for example, at the Troy district event, uh, we won our first quarterfinal match. We lost the second one, but in the third one, our second pick died. So if they had not died, I guess we might have had a chance to win that match and it would have given us 10 points. Um, besides that, at the Troy event, we also won Engineering Inspiration. So we got both the culture awards this year, which is also uh, very good for us. Um, besides that, I think at, at at the Michigan State Championship, Foley Freeze, uh, they're actually one of our um, like teams, like I think Grant Reichenbach, our um, drive coach, is actually an alum of 910. So we're really good friends with them. But the match that we had with them, for some reason, the whole time, their entire season, they missed the baseline cross. And if we had gotten that ranking point, that would have moved us up a couple positions in the rankings, right? And would have given us enough district points to uh, potentially make it to Worlds. And there was a couple matches where the result could have gone either way, and that would have also helped us. But there was um, just being that close, I guess, kind of um, gave us a different perspective from maybe uh, seasons that we've had in the past. I think last year we were the last Michigan team uh, to qualify for Worlds, and then this year we're just so close. But uh, I, I think it's somewhat beneficial for our freshmen and underclassmen who are kind of um, kind of I, almost galvanized by the experience and will hopefully push harder next year. Uh, besides that, uh, another part of our season was that we actually rebuilt our entire robot uh, after bag day. So uh, we, we originally built like a scale robot with like a pass through um, uh, pass through uh, design. So the, uh, we could pick up a cube from one side and then score it on either side um, onto the scale. But uh, we decided to scrap that completely before our week two event and rebuild to just a simple, uh, like a simple switch and vault robot that served us pretty well the, uh, the entire season. But yeah, so the main reason behind doing that was just because we reevaluated our strategic priorities. And also uh, we didn't think our scale robot was gonna be as competitive as some of the other scale robots out there just because of it, some of the height limitations that it had and just the mechanical robustness. And we, I know that you said you had a switch and vault robot. And one of the things about Michigan State Championships, I know it, it we were on the um, the DTE field, which was one of those gangbuster kind of fields. They had a lot of really good robots. We didn't have a single switch or vault robot that was chosen by any alliance in that on that playoff for that field so don't feel that bad i i think that switch and vault robots weren't at least at the michigan state championships valued as much as i think that scale robots were so it was just one of those weird years and i um, think you're right it was kind of a little off I want to say. yeah so i don't i don't know if I, so in the dow division there was a couple of robots that um were were switching scale robots beside us besides us but the thing is that no matter what, a lot of those second picks uh, later in the draft ended up fulfilling that need anyway. And the primary reason that we believe that we were not picked is because throughout the um, qualification rounds, we were focusing on a strategy that wasn't necessarily our forte. So we we're we we're doing a lot of opponent switch work while the in our some of our prior events, we were uh, focusing on kind of guarding our own switch and also doing the vault really fast. But uh, in in some of the uh, qualification matches at MSC, we uh, we were going on the other side and we were just weren't scoring as much. And also we added on a climber at Michigan State Championship, which might have actually had the opposite effect of like a lot of in the second pick, you don't really need that climber in the first place. For some teams like Strike Force who have a buddy climb, they don't really need a robot that has a climber. And that would take away the last 30 seconds us trying to potentially get a climb where we could be scoring more cubes. So, right, it was. I thought you're right. There was a lot of different uh, strategies that were deployed at, at Michigan State Championships, and you can just all all we did as as a rookie team was we tried to make ourselves as valuable as possible and listen because we we're rookies to other robots and see what they wanted us to do, and we we tried to prove ourselves. So, you know, good. You guys, I think, had a great season, and I think you'll have good seasons going ahead. You know, good Lord knows you have 187 kids, so I think you need your own fleet of buses just to get to an event at this point. I don't know how... <laughs> we have a, we, we have um, somewhat of a travel team for other events besides Troy 
that we host now, uh, the Troy FRC event that we've been hosting, I believe, since 2009, the district event. So you, we have a relatively large representation there of our students, uh, which is actually really exciting for us because now we, we actually host a um, competition at every single level of first progression of programs. So I believe you were at Shark Fest this past uh, November. I was. I was. I had a lot of fun, actually, too. Past, this past weekend, we just hosted our first F FTC competition called Hammerhead Mayhem because it's in May. And it just flows really nicely as well. So <laughs> nice. we're hoping you got, you got that business degree going already, I think. Yeah, junior FLL, FLL, FTC, FRC. We're hosting competitions at every level. So I want to I want to thank all four of you guys for coming on board tonight, especially at the time that we're recording. I wanted to make a little bit later so that we had everyone available. And the next question I have for you guys, and this one's going to go to you first, Danny, is um, you've had multiple years of experience in FIRST, right? So tell us a little bit about your, your specific, specific experience, experience in FIRST. In first. Uh, well, my experience in FIRST was not, like, as exciting. It, it started off, I was just a... Uh, uh, side builder. I was just doing small little projects on our uh, stronghold robot and everything. I wasn't, you know, the lead build. I wasn't doing anything major. And uh, during competition, I was kind of the be uh, bumper changer, but not really. Uh, so, and I wasn't good at scouting. I knew that right away. Uh, but when I moved on to my uh, next year uh, for Steamworks, I kind of picked up a role as game more into build but then uh our lead programmer kind of dropped a ball on us and didn't have a good program for our first competition when we got there so i learned java and programmed our ro reprogrammed our robot in the two days that we had before the final event so that was fun and i realized that i kind of did like programming so th this year I became a lead programmer, and I was also uh, kind of heading up everything else as the team leader. So I oversaw how the robot was being built. I checked in with a little bit of the marketing. Didn't understand, but I checked in. Uh, well, I tried to learn welding, everything, but I am not overly good at TIG welding, but our uh, lead welder is, so I let her do that. And... Yeah, that was uh, pretty much going from almost a no one to being team leader and lead programmer. That's, the, that's, that's a lot that's of pressure on a single person, person, to, handle. person to, handle. to handle. So, so thanks for telling thanks us, for a, little us a little bit about your past, past history, past Danny. History. Matt, tell us about your first experience. How, how many years do you have of, into robotics and, you know, what have you liked so far? So whenever I became a freshman, I first entered into high school, um, I knew I wanted to study engineering, uh, but I didn't quite understand what everything about engineering was about. Um, so I decided, like, why don't I start, like, a robotics club or something like that, you know, get a little bit more involved. Um, so what ended up happening was um, a friend and I pitched to the administration, hey, can we start a first robotics team at our school? And they said, go ahead, find the funding and uh, the people to do it and start it up. So we ended up starting up with uh, – 12 students, um, one mentor, and about $2,000 um, in a grant. Um, and then from there, we ended up uh, actually taking our program um, um, all the way up to where it is today. Um, we haven't done um, fairly well. We didn't do very well our first year, but that's just because of lack of experience. But um, in 2016, I ended up getting really, really involved with FIRST Robotics. And um, uh, it was just really exciting to see how all the other teams around us um, – we're building these beautiful, beautiful machines, and we're being able to go to the, off to the world championship um, for their efforts in their communities. And I wanted, to, and I made that a goal um, for myself and for my team to be able to do that um, by the time I reached uh, my senior year. Um, so from there, we started to um, just develop our program, develop our bots, um, and then. Um, Eventually, I just became more involved with the CADing and the design part. Um, and then overall, once we figured out that um, specifically just robot building isn't our forte, um, we started to actually move off into doing outreach events and stuff like that. So we ended up um, revitalizing our entire outreach program. We helped create classes at our school, um, different first teams around our community. Um, and then overall, we were just um, so excited about FIRST Robotics, and we were able to present it, and then we were able to... Um, make to the first championship this year, which we were really excited about. Um, but I think that kind of just summarizes my four years on the team. Um, 
And um, that, did that answer your question? Yeah, um, it did. Yeah, I mean, it's refreshing, Matt. That, you know, everyone talks about robots, and one of the things that uh, I've started to do to recruit for next year is try to get kids that are not interested necessarily in building the robot but getting more into the business or the social media aspect or, or the media aspect or you know uh, video production because those those jobs need to get done too it's not just about building a robot and a drive team driving the robot you have to build this and you talked about the rookie inspiration award and how you guys won that you know or not the rookie i'm sorry but the engineering inspiration award and how that is more centralized around the business and outreach and, and that type of thing. So it, listening to you and having that aspect of it, I think also brings to light that there's more than just building a robot. And a lot of kids that may be on the fence of wanting to join a team can join a team and, and understand that aspect. Ethan, tell us a little bit about your first experience and what you've uh, latched on to as far as what you've learned and what you're going to carry forward. So my first experience started sort of unconventionally. Um, my older brother, who's about eight years older than me, founded the team I'm a part of now um, back when I was seven years old. So I've been to competitions since I was seven. I've seen you know, some inc incredible amount of matches. I've been a part of this program for almost as long as I can remember. And as I started you know, getting older, going, uh, I went into high school and I joined the program, um, I did sort of little things at the beginning. I did things like the uh, the old safety animation award. I revamped our team's website, and there's still things that I continue to do today, especially the website. Um, but entering onto the team, I also really wanted to be a driver, um, just because that's what I'd seen the most of. I'd seen a lot of the robot, and I really enjoyed that that aspect of it and the the strategy behind driving and that sort of thing. And so um, I <laughs> I tried really hard to be a driver. Um, my freshman year, I got the co-pilot position, and the way I did that was by watching even more matches. The Blue Alliance became my best friend. <laughs> it is my number one like visited website for like three years in a row, because all I do is watch match video, and I get better and better at learning how these matches work and about other teams' robots. Um, so I was a, an operator of my robot for my freshman and sophomore years, and then graduated to being a driver my junior year, and so I was driver junior year and senior year. Um, so before I joined the team um, as a driver, uh, we'd never played in world eliminations before. And in the four years I've been on the team, we've been subdivision finalists three times. Um, so I, I think I'm making an impact there. Um, I've also really joined in on the, the technical side of the team. Um, this year I was voted technical director, so I'm in charge of managing our robot, uh, our resources in that area, and all of our sort of robot strategy and making final decisions on design. So I do a lot of um, CAD design. Um, I'm the main CAD, CAD guy on my team, that sort of stuff. Um, but I also do a little bit of the, the uh, outreach and public relations type stuff. So I do things like a designer t-shirt. I still manage the website. I do some of our documentation. I do videos. I shot a reveal video this year, um, that sort of thing. And Mr. Sharma, tell us a little bit about your first experience and, and what you've enjoyed. So I think if I really wanted to answer this question, I could probably keep on talking for hours and hours. But really, I think so. I've been involved with STEM and uh, for as long as I can remember, but not necessarily like first. Like I've been drawing cars and like getting super interested in like DIY stuff just just as a kid. But I never really got to do robotics. And then in eighth grade, uh, through Science Olympiad, there was a um, an event called. I think something something to do with robots, but we actually had a VEX kit. So I got introduced to VEX robotics in eighth grade and we had kind of a like a capstone project where we talked about everything we did in middle school and my interviewer was actually a uh, previous mentor on two do six. So he told me to go and uh, possibly join um, um, once I once I was in high school. So I remember like during the summer I sent an email to uh, our our just our team our Team 226's email, and I got a response saying, hey, why, like, we don't start till the fall, right? And I was really bummed because I, I just wanted to get into robotics as soon as I possibly could. And uh, freshman year, I joined the mechanical team, so uh, I got to learn a little bit about um, just more in depth of using, like, tools like mills and lades, right? Uh, but that was kind of my only contribution to the team as a freshman until competition started. So at the Michigan State Championship, uh, we had to do, like, pit scouting. So 
um, I kind of just took it upon myself to complete as many teams as possible. So I would just keep on going back, taking forms. And I think one of our, our president that year, David Yang, who's now at Purdue, um, kind of noticed that work ethic. And he put me as like the qualitative scouting lead for our world championship. And just going to the world champ- championship freshman year really, I think, inspired me. And I went to um, Karthik kind of gas um strategy talk. And through that and kind of discovering the culture of greatness that 1114s developed and all the resources that are available online, I really wanted to make a positive impact on my team and try to get them to be the best as possible. Um, so I got really heavily um, involved with the strategy on our team. And I think just a, just a couple months after that, we were at the Mark competition uh, that we actually ended up winning with uh, Truck Town Thunder and the Flying Toasters. And just that experience and just showing me how like strategy can be so important and how big of an impact it can have on a team's um, performance and also in inspiring other students that are on the team as well. Uh, that really pushed me to, to be really like strategy heavy sophomore year. We also did like a lot of outreach. I think my sophomore year at our first competition, our robot didn't do as well, but we won the engineering inspiration award. And then at the second competition, I really made sure, because we were basically only a logo robot um, that year, and we actually ended up making it all the way to semis at Troy. And I think a lot of that could be attributed to the influence of the kind of the importance that we put on strategy in between our first and second event. But we still didn't make it this, make it to states that year, which was kind of, uh, I guess, heartbreaking uh, to me as a sophomore, but also to so many of the seniors graduating that year. Um, where we just weren't as successful as we hoped to be. So that upcoming year, we worked really hard. Uh, we took part in Dean's homework um, that year as well, which is like sending out emails to uh, representatives and senators and hosting countless uh, outreach events. We had like an outreach event basically every single week that year. Um, and we won chairmans for the first time in seven years, my junior year. And um, also besides that, I noticed that I, I really wanted to have a bigger impact on my team outside of like strategy and mechanical. Um, so I kind of took it upon myself to learn um, CAD uh, through Inventor. And just one thing that I like s- say about my team is that um, like we have GM as a huge sponsor through the Warren Tech Center, and we've had access to resources for such a long time, but no one to use them properly. Um, we had like CAD students and all, but we, we weren't doing anything like making custom gearboxes or really diving deep into the CAD um, uh, CAD design, mechanical design that you see other teams doing. So I, through like online resources like Chief Delphi, I kind of created like this training program for our design students to go through. And that year was also the first time in seven years that we had a custom design gearbox on a robot. And we had like an 800% increase in precision manufactured parts through water jetting. And I think that was really rewarding for me and other students, too, to kind of see, uh, especially like freshmen, uh, to kind of see their parts that they design on the computer, right, to come and kind of take life on a robot. And we made it back to the world championship that year, too, which is great uh, seeing that all that hard work kind of paid off. So um, that's one one advice I would definitely give to freshmen is get involved in programming or get involved in CAD, something like that, uh, uh, like a like a software that kind of has a higher learning curve, like Autodesk Inventor or possibly programming through Java, LabVIEW, C++. Something like that can be can have a huge impact on your team. And it's also something that there's a lot of resources online. And it's definitely a lot of hard work to learn. But you can have a huge contribution to your team. And um, throughout that, uh, this past year, um, and just the hard work that me and a lot of team members put in, um, has really like pushed us from being a completely different team uh, my freshman year to what it is now. And we hope to kind of go forward and accomplish greater things. And like I said, I didn't get to do FLL or FTC like a lot of these other students. Um, So because of that, we actually started like Troy Youth Robotics, um, which now I think there's over 50 teams and we're, we're trying to get as many FLL and FTC teams started in our district. We have, I think, 18 FTC teams now, which is kind of crazy. Uh, when you compare it to uh, some of the other districts. So we're just trying to create the largest feeder program possible. And I, I think because of like all the hard work that um, I put in to kind of make our team better and all the programs that we kind of started, my junior year, I was also a Dean's List winner 
And I had the honor of going over to Dean Kamen's house uh, and being part of the Dean's List Summit, which is also an amazing experience. And it definitely kind of captures um, my experience with FIRST and what I'm going to take forward into the future and just the skills, the 21st century skills that have kind of prepared me um, to be a more successful person, hopefully. Well, you guys all have very large uh, experiences with FIRST, some from a very early age, some not until you hit high school. So I think one of the beauties of the FIRST program, having all the different levels of robotics, is some kids get started at an early age, some get started at, a, at an older age, but you guys all love it, So and so do I as a mentor. So that's why we do what we do. So the next uh, line of questions I have for you guys is, and uh, Mr. Sharma started building onto it is Danny what would you what was what's the piece of advice if you had a freshman that's coming in what would you sit them down and tell them what should they do their first year in robotics I would say the their first year of robotics freshmen they mostly depending on the team size but find something that they love and do it and find out how to do it well find out how to make it your thing to do uh, I tried to make, you know, try to become the builder, but then programming kind of caught my attention and I decided I would do that. And I did it well enough that other people are asking me how to program, which was a surprise. So other freshmen uh, should find out, find what their strong suit is or what their, what they want to do in robotics and find out how to do it well for the years to come and matt what would you advise a freshman coming in i mean the, the one thing about robotics especially if you're starting as a freshman is kind of like starting in college and we'll get your guys's college experiences coming here really fast but it is it's that you can experience and pick something so what would you suggest that a freshman do I would honestly recommend that a freshman just dive into it. Um, so similar to how um, Dick Shant just dove into scouting, uh, similar to how I just dove into the mechanical design and driving, um, and how Daniel decided that he needs to do programming, um, I feel just um, dive into first. Um, start learning all you can about it. Um, start um, just getting really into it. And if you're interested, just take that interest and then develop that into a passion. Um, and through doing that, you're just going to be able to do great things on your team, whether that be um, great technical work or great um, design work or great um, outreach work. Um, but whatever you do, you're sh sure to make a difference on the team. If you have that passion, you just dive on into it. And Ethan, if we can expand onto this, and, and you're, I want to hear your suggestion of what you tell a freshman, but can you expand it into a little bit more? What if a, what if a freshman has an FTC experience? What would you tell them that the difference is with FRC? Because FRC is like the Super Bowl of robotics. What would you tell them? What would you suggest that they do? I think number one is to try everything. Even if you have an experience on a previous team, whether it's FTC or FLL, I'd been on an FLL team before. Um, and I was a programmer on the FL team. So trying everything gives you a little bit of taste of you know everything. And don't discount um, what other people on your team do. Maybe you'll find that really interesting. It's, you know, try and get yourself out there, but it's not necessarily in one specific thing. I think it's all about trying to find what thing you're best at and being and then choosing to excel at that in later years. But freshman year is certainly about, you know, trying little bits of everything you know try and doing some mechanical or some electrical some programming and see what really fits with you and uh mr sharma what you've you already started a little bit on on what you would suggest that a freshman do how about building on to that a little bit yeah so just building on to what the last couple of students said is that if you have enthusiasm right you can really accomplish anything i think one thing um from that karthik says too is that that if if this is in one of his speeches of his uh, when I was uh, in ninth grade during one of the strategy talks. He talks about if you're enthusiastic, like I, I think the example that he gives is that if you just have a normal accountant, right, and then you have an accountant that's really enthusiastic about their job, right, the person that is really enthusiastic is going to end up being uh, a lot more successful. So and another motto of our team um, is knowledge is knowledge is power, but enthusiasm throws the switch, right? And when you start freshman year, you might not have the knowledge, right? But if you have that enthusiasm, you can really get uh, very far. So 
Um, besides that, I would say freshmen, don't be hesitant to reach out to the community to ask questions. That was actually the way that I learned uh, a lot as a student uh, in FRC. During the off season, we didn't necessarily have the mentorship to kind of provide more knowledge. So I kind of looked out to other uh, public forums like Chief Delphi and other messaging uh, sites to potentially gain a lot more knowledge. And I think without that, I really wouldn't have uh, been able to kind of provide those experiences to other students as well. Um, so don't be hesitant to to send some messages on uh, Chief Delphi. There's a lot of other great places out there. Uh, Reddit FRC is mostly memes now, but uh, besides that, a lot of messaging like the FRC Discord and uh, other sites like that. So don't be afraid to go online, look for resources. Um, if you just search like FRC resources, or if, even if you go to Spectrum's website, uh, 3847, they have a lot of amazing information up there um, to potentially guide you on your first journey and give you a lot more information, whether it's in regards to CAD or business. Uh, there's so many different things you can do and definitely just enthusiasm and go out and find find the information because it's definitely out there. First has existed for so long and it just anything that you basically want to know is based on the internet. So um, great way to learn and great way to contribute to your team. All great pieces of advice from you gentlemen. And we greatly appreciate that. And anyone listening will appreciate that. So one of the last questions I have for each of you, and we're going to start with you, Danny, again, is what are you going to do now that you're going, your, your, your final season's done. You're officially a, you're no, you're still a senior. You're graduating, or you may have already graduated, depending on what your school does. What are you going to go off and do? Do you are you going to trade school? Are you going to go to college? Are you going to start your own company? I mean, the, the, the world's an oyster for you to crack open and do whatever you want to do. So, what are you going to do? Well, uh, being done with high school at this moment, I just graduated. Uh, I've really decided on going to Kettering University and pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering with uh, minors in electrical and hopefully computer engineering to kind of get that robotics-esque uh, uh, degree to it. Um, hopefully I can continue with uh, become, uh, being with like a robotics engineer in uh, either like industrial or home robotics eventually and everything. And I don't think I would be an entrepreneur, but I would definitely help uh, bigger companies out on designing and developing these robotics uh, mechanisms and everything for whatever I decide to go into specifically. But mostly I do want to stay with FIRST Robotics and kind of help out uh, local teams of wherever I settle. Right, and, and the one thing that I'm going to advise you, because I advised the, the seniors I had last year, is make sure you take some time to yourself and get adjusted to college Everyone wants to help the, the team that they left, you know, that they, they left a legacy on, if you want to say. But you do have to take time and make sure you acclimate yourself to college. That's just a piece of advice from yeah. my mentor right here. So Trust me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know about that. I already have another team asking for help this coming year. So I don't just have to tell my team to leave me alone. I have to tell a few others. <laughs> well, you don't have to say leave me alone. Just say I need time to acclimate myself to college. Make sure you're good, oh, yeah. your grades are good, and they'll they'll totally understand that. So, Matt, tell us what you're going to do when if if you haven't already graduated, you're a couple weeks away. What are you going to do um, come in the fall? So uh, this fall, I'll be going to uh, the Ohio State uh, University for Engineering, um, studying computer engineering, and um, mostly um, just in the beginning, just going to you know. Uh, be acclimated to college because it's just it's going to be a new experience, right? Um, but I'm going to hopefully, you know, help out my team just to make sure that um, they fulfill my long-term goal of winning the Chairman's Award next year because um, we haven't done that yet, and that's like on my bucket list. <laughs> um, but other than that, I'm just going to try to get acclimated to college and stuff, and eventually I want to be able to um, get a good co-op, um, get a good job, um, graduate with. Um, my master's in computer engineering and hopefully get my MBA in the, in the future um, and manage a technology company. That's always a good aspect to don't forget about that MBA. I have an MBA myself. It can open many, 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 many doors if you allow it to. And I will not hold you going off to Ohio State against you, although I'm a University of Michigan hardcore 
Wolverine fan. We will just leave that at that and we'll just Ooh. shake on it. And well, maybe you and me will follow up in the fall when the football season comes around and we can start talking some smack back and forth. Ethan, please tell us what you're planning to do when you go off to college. Uh, so I'm going to be attending uh, Purdue University in Indiana, um, studying mechanical engineering. Um, I hope to work with the team when I get there, um, pass on some of the experience I have. Um, I don't know if that'll happen first semester. I don't think it will. <laughs> I, that's, a, that's, that's a good uh, a good approach. I'm just telling <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. But uh, as soon as I can, I'd like to start working with an FRC team, mostly because it's just been such a huge part of my life for so long. And I really hope I can help make other teams um, as uh, better. And Mr. Sharma, dare I ask what you're going off to do after high school? What are you going to do in the fall? Yeah, um, I, I'm glad that you asked to do and now we're <laughs> going because I'm actually taking a gap year this upcoming um, upcoming year. So basically, I'm going to be continuing my part-time job that I have as kind of a design intern with this uh, medical startup and then also working a full-time job as a robotic simulation um, intern uh, at another company. That's not 100% set in stone yet, but that's kind of what I'm planning to do uh, starting in July uh, and kind of get some experience and get some money and kind of show off what I've done this last four years in terms of actual work experience and how just the experiences I've gained through robotics have um, kind of pushed me to already be able to kind of um, contribute at a level that a lot of students might not be able to um, after their maybe even their first year of college. So um, that's kind of what I'm looking to do this upcoming year and potentially gain more experience. I have a lot of respect for taking gap years. Sometimes people take gap years for different reasons. We we heard your approach. I know I've known students have taken a gap year just to decompress. So as we sign out, I'm going to have you guys both all introduce yourself again. Uh, tell us who you are, what team you're from, the location that your team's from, and then tell me what you think the FRC Deep Space game is going to be. Give us a little bit of a... Uh, an idea of what you think it is. Don't say Lunacy 2.0. We already heard that that guess last week. Um, tell us what you think, Danny. What do you think it's going to be? And don't forget to introduce yourself and tell us about the team and where your location is. All right. Um, I'm Daniel Workin. I'm from Team Fridgebot in uh, Corona, Michigan. Small team. And I believe that uh, this coming season of First Robotics, FRC, I believe it's going to be definitely a rough landscape. Uh, so there's going to be rugged terrain out there that uh, we at Team Fridgebot is excelling at with our pneumatic tires. And it's probably going to do something with uh, maybe launching an object and trying to land it in a specific location, be it a meteorite or a lunar lander, because it's, it is the 50th year of the moon landing. So it could go either way with those, but I'm definitely thinking there is a uh, going to be rough terrain out there for teams to traverse on the playing field. And Matt, you're up next. So I haven't the slightest clue of what the game will be. I haven't read up on uh, um, Dick Shant's, um game theory <laughs> post on Chief Gel 5 recently. But um, if I would say anything about the game next year, it's going to be um, well, Autonomous is going to win matches like it has for the past three years now. Um, so having a good Autonomous is going to be key to winning the game, whatever the game is going to be. Um, I've heard some things about um, some, like uh, if I can remember, like some 2014 yoga balls being introduced back again or something like that. But I mean, yeah, I haven't the slightest clue. But I'm hoping that next year is going to be the best game out of all my past years. And don't forget to tell us who you are, what team you're from, oh, and the yeah. location. Yep, yep. Um, so I'm Matt Esser um, from Team 5740 um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And next up, Ethan. I'm Ethan Simi from Team Mountaineer Area Robotics, Team 2614 in Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, I think the 2019 game is going to be another dual objective game like we've seen the last three years where there's either two game pieces or at least two ways to score. Um, there could be more than two ways to score, but it will probably be some sort of launching game piece. Um, so either like a frisbee or a ball of some sort, and I think we're going to see uh, another objective similar to the the stronghold um, tower where you're you're fighting for an objective, whether that's like launching off your rocket into deep space or something. Oh, so you think that we're going to have um, we're going to have team players on the on the field again? 
<laughs> I'm not sure, but it's a possibility. And Mr. Sharma, please tell us who you are, what team you're from, location, and what do you think Deep Space is going to be? Well, I'm, I'm Dick Sean Sharma from FRC Team 226 in Troy, Michigan. Um, kind of studying game patterns and uh, what's going to happen for the future, I guess, has kind of been like a hobby for mine, especially during the summer off season. And uh, I think one of my chief thought by posts, well, my most popular thread, I guess, is the first four year four year game cycle theory thread. I think has like around 100 replies now and like 29k views or something like that. But um, basically, I, I went over this is uh, two years ago. Um, I kind of went over a trend that I kind of noticed, like a four year game cycle. Um, Thing that I noticed it's kind of not really been uh, like it hasn't been super accurate I guess these last two years as it um, kind of was in between I guess 2003 to 2016 and now like like after talking to Frank Merrick um, this past year too at the festival championship we actually got to talk to like the game design committee and uh, how they were doing and I think uh, this was on your podcast last year but they were kind of designing the 2018 and 2019 game in conjunction um, I that's not going to like the 2018 game shouldn't have any influence on the 2019 game. So it wouldn't be anything like, Oh, we had climbing this year. We're not going to have climbing next year. Um, I think climbing is like kind of been common over these last couple of years, just because of how it could be somewhat entertaining to um, the audience. But in certain years, like 2017, it's kind of like a, um, a somewhat easy task that can seem very hard and impressive to audience members. Um, but besides that, I don't really know what's going to happen next year. I think there's a lot of different things, and first isn't necessarily following any type of strict pattern, but some things that I'm possibly thinking of is like a football type of game, maybe like a rugby type of thing. I know that was brought up in um, uh, some of the, um, the uh, on Chief Delphi, uh, some of the posts on Chief Delphi earlier, but I think that would be a really cool game element just because we haven't seen anything like it in the past. And it, it could possibly match um, something like a rocket. I was I really strongly believed uh, la- right before Steamworks in 2017 that it was going to be like a football type game, with the footballs would be like airships. But uh, unfortunately, that wasn't true. I think we even did some like prototyping of how to pick up footballs um, with some roller intakes uh, just ahead of time, j- just for fun. Uh, but this year, I don't know. I I, I, w- I would I would really really like to see footballs on the field just because it's just something that's unique and something that's not really been seen in first before for these last um, 25 plus years. I sincerely hope you're wrong. I can't even think of how I'd pick up a football and launch it across the thing other than just gripping it and ripping it. But I mean, th- that's what people thought about like, oh, about like Frisbees or other game objects like Tetras, uh, unusual game objects like that, which might seem somewhat hard at first to uh, pick up or shoot or place, but after time, you see teams prototyping, and you realize that the task isn't maybe as hard as you originally thought. I feel well, like the, the, I feel there like there are machines in the NFL that 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 do they use for practice for launching a football. So I know there's mechanics out there, and, and the science is out there. It's I mean, just... you don't always have to pick it up from the floor. If you look at six ten from 2013 World Championship team, they were an amazing just human player cycler. So. Okay, I thank all you guys for coming on to the podcast tonight. I think you gave some very, very good advice. Well, we enjoyed hearing about you, your teams, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next year at some point at our district events or our championships or world championships for those of you that aren't here in Michigan. And we wish you all the luck on behalf of the podcast and everyone that's listening. Good luck to you and good luck to all those seniors that are out there going off to college or going off to your aspirations of what you want to do with your life. And we wish you all the luck. And don't forget that we're still here. One of the biggest things about FIRST is it's the biggest network you're ever going to be part of. So make sure you rely on us, the mentors, your your fellow students. Anytime you need help, make sure that you reach out just like you do in a season. Yeah, that's what Dean, Dean says, the largest alumni network. Other than the military. Yeah. I got one on him. Other than the military, he's the biggest network in the world. <laughs> Trust me, there are a lot of us. Millions. <laughs> but thank you guys for coming on the podcast. We enjoyed having you. Have a good night. And uh, thank you. Opportunity. We'll see you. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. Good night. The RoboZone Podcast is brought to you by Kettering University.
It's a Kettering-built world. Again, I'd like to thank all the seniors for taking time in this busy, busy, busy time of their lives now that they're graduating, getting ready to go off to college for giving some advice for those incoming freshmen. Thank you for listening to the RoboZone podcast. This was the 61st episode of the RoboZone podcast. You can listen to us on Google Music, on iTunes podcast, and also on SoundCloud. We welcome you to contact us on our social media if you would like to be interviewed for the podcast. We are in our summer months. There is a lull of information right now. So if you would like to introduce yourself to the robotics world, if you have a viewpoint that you would like to express about robotics, no matter the level, please reach out to us. We will interview you. If you have an event coming up in the summer, if you have fundraising events going on around to help support your teams, you can also be brought onto the podcast and announce those. We welcome you to do that. Thank you for listening to the RoboZone podcast. We look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great week. Have a great Memorial Day weekend coming up, and we will see you on our next podcast. Thanks for listening to the RoboZone podcast with your host, Pete Ekman. Find us online at RoboZoneTV.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Hey.